Hi there, my name is Richard Victory, and I'm doing a video of a realistic battle walkthrough, for you lack of a better way of explaining it. It's an example of some of the best flying that myself and uh, squadron may have done recently. Uh, the objective of this video is to sort of walk you through how we flew this mission, uh, give you an understanding, hopefully, of how you can think your way through a realistic battle. Uh, realistic battles allow you a different pace of flight versus arcade, allows you more time to think, uh, it's a bit more of a chess match, for lack of a better way of explaining it. In this video, I'm working with a wingman, uh, Corbria. She's uh, extremely good at what she does. I've been flying with her since we both started playing War Thunder. And uh, we're constantly working to ensure that we're talking over comms. We keep our aircraft in very similar configurations so that we can work very effectively together. point you're going to notice that we're flying into some clouds here. Of course, why clouds? In realistic battle, the thing which will get you killed fastest is, as a, as a bomber pilot, is an enemy fighter seeing you. So we're flying high, loaded with bombs, and uh, the enemy knows where we have to go. What they don't know is how we're going to get there. So the objective is to stay up where they can't see us, use as much cloud cover to mask our flight as we can, and then drop in on the target, giving them as little warning as possible. The problem is, of course, is that when you're flying through clouds, all you see is gray. That can be a little bit boring, and it took about five minutes to fly to the target, so I'm just going to skip out about four minutes of this and get to the part where we actually start attacking. So as we're heading in, we do f have a plan in mind. The objective is from the U.S. spawn area. We're on the Korea map, realistic battles. So from the U.S. spawn area, we're going to fly east along the hills, about 10,000 feet, and then veer north to attack the bridge. So we're essentially hitting the bridge along the long axis with very little lineup. Uh, Corby is in the lead. My ship's about a kilometer behind her. The plan is, if she kills the bridge, then I'm just going to veer off and go after some of the armor that's on the other side of the river, try and unload the bombs, score a, qu a few quick kills. If she doesn't kill the bridge, then I'm going to be right behind her, have plenty of time to see that, and hopefully be able to finish the bridge off. If someone else gets the bridge first, the plan is we're both going to break off, vector off towards the nearest tank column, and put our bombs on the, on the uh, incoming tanks. Both aircraft are carrying four 250-pound bombs. The enemy knows what they're doing, and we both presume that they are due. Then we expect they're going to have a couple of fighters protecting the bridge. They know that we have to knock that bridge out, or we're going to lose immediately. So we're going to uh, expect to be having to fight air-to-air -air as soon as the, our bombs are off the racks. Um, so from about... 10,000 feet and about 10 kilometers away, we start into a long, shallow dive, angling in for the bridge, but we're building up a whole lot of momentum for the run into the bridge. So right away, almost even before we get a chance to start our attack, we see the mission objective failed. So the other team is doing their job. This ups the ante for us. We need to kill that enemy bridge or we'll lose. The way this map works is that the both sides have um, AI tanks, which are rolling into a capture zone. If their AI tanks outnumber our AI tanks, we lose. So they've just cut the bridge, which will prevent our reinforcements from getting into the capture zone. That means we need to stop that, to kill that bridge. And the slaughter begins. So we've lost the bridge, and now we've lost a pre-36 in the first few moments. And then we lose a second. And then a third. So just as... Corby was lining up on the bridge, uh, an A-20G flown by Poker 57 came basically right down the river, low level, and hit the bridge at a perpendicular approach. Fantastic bomber work. Low, fast, put bombs right on the target, out goes the bridge. So now we veer off towards our secondary targets. 
So you'll notice I was dropping pairs of bombs during that run. Um, the Beaufort, as I said, was dropping 250 pound bombs. Because of the artificially reduced kill radius that Gaijin uses, you pretty much have to get within 25 feet of a medium tank to ensure a kill. So particularly in realistic mode, we aim for pairs of tanks with pairs of bombs. That improves the odds of a hit or a kill. The first pair was a miss, the second pair was a hit and a kill. Not sure why it didn't show on the playback. Now you probably noticed that uh, Corbia just took out some AA there. Killing flax is important to long-term strategy. If you can't find clusters of tanks, kill clusters of AAA. It'll just make your life easier later on. Here you'll see me going vertical. Uh, we just had to go air to air. We picked up a fighter who just showed up a little bit late to the party over that bridge. With a uh, thousand pounds of bombs and a dozen pounds of fuel used, the Beaufort now has power to burn. By going vertical, I force the enemy fighter to commit to a poor energy state. I'm not suffering because of all that low weight. If he extends and goes after Corbria, I slot in behind him and use 303s with API. If he chases me up into the loop, he flies into my dot .50s using API, and Corbria turns to engage him from a 6 o'clock. Either way, he's squeezed. So this is an example of long scissors and defensive flying. The enemy fighter pilot was smart. He let me finish my loop, avoid engaging me until I had to move to rejoin Corbria, and then he dropped in on me. So Corbria is about 500 meters ahead of me. So I tell her to cut her power down, and I scale up to war emergency power. Now, due to some strange behavior with War Thunder's playback, my gunner, my tail gunner, sorry, seems to be firing to the left and right all the time. But the bandit's actually in my 5.6.7 arc this whole time. At this point, you can see us flying a classic scissors maneuver, even as the distance between our two planes is dropping. My tail gunner's firing bursts, which means the enemy fighter doesn't want to get too close. It makes it hard for him to hit me, and it also means he's not really paying attention to the fact that the other bomber's tail gunner is getting into firing range. And we just lost another one of our planes to enemy fighters. If you're counting, that leaves three on our team in the air, the A-20 flown by Poker 57, and Corbury and I in our Beauforts. And there's Corbury's tail gunner opening fire. And that's more dot .50 API heading towards the bandit. The bandit at this point realizes he's being reeled in, and he bugs out. Our tail's clear. And this is the Gaijin fan club moment. This is a damn pretty game. Take a look at that. At this point, the plan is to keep about a 300 meter spacing and head back to our airbase to refuel and rearm. Re We've both taken a bit of flak and 7 millimeter damage, but nothing dangerous. What we have to be cautious of is enemy fighters trying to catch us on the way back to base. And now the enemy starts cleaning up. With most of our team shot down, the enemy starts hitting ground targets and clearing the way for what should be a probable victory for them. As most fighter pilots know, the best time to kill a bomber is when he's committed to a landing with his gear down. So I'm expecting we're going to run into somebody at our airfield. So I warn Corbria that as we approach the air airfield, to keep our eyes open for enemy fighters dropping out of the sun on us. We're staring right into that glare that limits our vision. Sure enough, the A-20G that's operating all by himself, already at the base, flies into a pre-made of four fighters, part of the LOS squadron. He manages to shoot one down, and he gets splashed.
this is going to be a battle for our airbase. We plan to engage the enemy fighters over our base because we just can't land safely with them in the air. The plan is simple. We either wear them out, uh, where they shoot us down, we shoot them down, or our AAA nails them. We have the luxury of flying defensively here. We have 40 minutes of fuel left, very little damage, and 8 friendly AA guns. So we head in full power, combat flats deployed. LOS are smart, and they've already started killing our AAA. Within moments, however, AAA had downed two of them. So Corbury and I both go vertical and away from each other, forcing the attacker to pick who to chase, leaving the other friendly to pull in behind him. The acrobatic smoke from our planes at this point is pure saucy. We're showing off and trying to annoy our attacker. I'm trailing red, she's trailing green. We always fly with smoke turned on when we're flying in arcade. He commits to attacking Corbria, and I slip in behind him. The nose gunner starts firing as soon as I'm level. In realistic battles, if you're doing any kind of hard flying, your gunners won't be firing unless they have high G tolerance and high stamina. So here he breaks, trying to split us with me chasing him. That's okay. Even as he's outturning me, Corbury is now free to come in behind him, and he's back in the same situation. As a point of comment, the safest place to be with an enemy fighter is behind him. Even if you don't have nose guns, he can't shoot you in his six. He switches targets again, going after Corbria, so I pull in behind him. He's got dot .50 coming at him from ahead and dot .303 coming at him from behind. Uh-oh. We screw up, and instead of flying a heart breakout, we're both flying line astern, and Corbria can't support me. She's too far away. And then another enemy fighter jumps into the battle over the airfield. And thankfully flies right into a hangar while trying to strafe an AA gun. And the last attacker gets splashed by AAA as Corbury and I get our act together and pull back into formation. At this point, we know there are two enemy aircraft out there somewhere. We don't have eyes on them. I instruct Corbury to land, since she's already lined up at the runway. I'm going to fly top cover in case either or both of those fighters suddenly show up. You'll notice my port engine is smoking. In fact, you'll notice my entire port side is shot full of holes. As soon as Corbury calls that she's got her wheels off the ground, I bank and dive to get the plane on the ground as fast as I can. Not my best landing, but the ship and crew were safe.
At this point, we're both repaired and reloaded, so we're planning our next run. We look at the map and realize that with the enemy bridge out and the enemy armor on our side of the bridge destroyed, there's no way the enemy team can capture the target. That means the only way they win is by shooting both of us down. We are way behind on tickets. That means we will have to carry out repeated sorties and trash about 12 ground targets to break even. If the enemy have any smarts at all, they'll loiter over those targets and hit us on our attack runs. We don't have a choice. If we don't hit them, we lose when the mission timer runs out. Again, we're flying slight line astern here, about 300 to 500 meter spacing, with me slightly higher. This gives lots of look around versus attacking fighters as we're heading in on our run. so we drop our bombs and we both manage to put iron on the targets. No thanks to Guy Jin or the War Thunder playback here for catching that though. Sure enough, there is the first enemy fighter heading to intercept us as we cross the river. I break high and right, while Corbury extends the horizontal. Again, the attacker has to choose, and this leaves the other plane in a position to slip in behind him for a squeeze play. At this point, it all could have gone horribly badly for me. I'm not in a pure head-on. I'm actually crossing to his right and below him, so my gunners get shots at his engine and belly as he goes by. And much to my momentary horror, he fires a salvo of rockets at me. They basically bracket the play on all four sides, but thankfully score no hits. Now, at this point, Corbury and I are in an alternating turn fighting with a biplane. Please understand, we don't expect to stay on his tail. What we do expect is to spread the damage he'll do between the two bombers in the time it takes for a burst of our API to take him out of the air. We're trying to make it as hard as possible for him to focus on one of us. We're trying to maximize the time the bomber not being attacked has to fire at the fighter's tail. I get lucky, and he lingers on my tail a little too long, a little too close, and my dot fifties blow his tail off. Just in time for the other fighter to drop in on us from wherever he'd been patrolling when his chum said he'd found us. I'm in the best position, so I steer to engage with nose guns where Corbrius steers away. Again, we're forcing the enemy pilot to pick a target and allowing the other bomber a free shot at his tail. He takes the bait and goes after Corbrius' tail, which means he winds up in a squeeze between my nose 303s and her tail 50s. Gaijin, you really need to fix the playback system. My nose gunner is firing at the enemy fighter. Basically, there are tracers going everywhere around that fighter in both directions. I'll give him points for cool. He's stuck to his play, trying to shoot Corbria down. 
trying to break away at this point would have meant he'd just get run down by our two bombers. He's raking Corbury's ship over badly even as both of us are marking hits on him. Both of those pilots are doing some excellent flying. And then she puts a burst of API into his engine and sets him on fire. I stay on his tail, letting my nose gunner keep shooting steadily, making sure he's not going to put that fire out before, the, before he augers in. And he fights it all the way to the ground, but he just cannot keep the plane in the air. At this point, with her ship shot full of holes, Corbria steers for high air. All we have to do is let the ticket counter bleed out, with the enemy air force defeated. And that was a win. One air kill and one air assist each, we contributed to the defeat of a total of six enemy aircraft. Lessons learned. First, never ever leave your wingman. Second, if you didn't bring a wingman from your own squadron, volunteer to be somebody else's in the match. Thirdly, keep fighting even if you don't think you can win. We probably should not have won that match by conventional thinking, but we just kept fighting. Next, play the terrain. We used our own AAA batteries to our advantage constantly. And lastly, think of your enemy's plans as well as your own. They Know how they have to fight to win the game so that you can be ready for it.